Hey folks, this is Soapbox here. I'm super stoked for today's video and have been working on it since the update. Today we'll be taking a look at reviewing the Stealth Sunderer. And yes, these are now a part of the game. At first, a lot of people thought it was a glitch, but it is an official part of the game and was added on the July 23rd game update. You can check out the patch notes by clicking the link in the description. Now, the biggest question people are asking is how do you get the stealth certification? This is a little bit confusing because it has been added under the vehicle stealth in the Sunderer defensive slot. However, it comes at a pretty hefty price. To obtain the cloak, you must have max rank vehicle stealth, which now costs 2,330 certs. So, anyone running the certification definitely deserves what they paid for. But what did they pay for? Well, Let's take a look at the Stealth Cloaking Module, as that is what it's called, and what it brings to the Sunderer. I did some pretty intensive testing, so I'll be providing you with some very interesting and important knowledge along the way that no one else has. So definitely watch the whole video, as I have some important game mechanics to go over that will change how you interact with the Stealth Cloaking Module. When a Sunderer is deployed with the Stealth Cloaking Module equipped, it becomes invisible and projects a bubble with a 10 meter radius that makes all infantry units invisible, which includes Maxes. It takes exactly one second from the moment you hit deploy until the time that the Sunderer becomes fully cloaked and the bubble is up and active. All infantry units cloak at the same rate as a normal infiltrator cloaking, which means it's quick but it's not instant. Every time a unit cloaks or uncloaks due to the bubble, it makes a standard infiltrator cloaking or uncloaking noise. A few quick things to know about the bubble. The 10 meter range is from the center of the sunderer, not from the edges, so there is more room to the sides than there is on the front or the back. An interesting fact is that terrain does not affect the bubble, so people can be under its effects even through walls, rocks, etc. Also, the bubble is in a full circle unlike the half circle of the shield regen devices that the medics have. This means it can make people invisible who are a floor underneath it, assuming you are deployed on top of the room. For an infantry unit to become invisible within the bubble, they have to be completely covered and the game has to recognize that. This means that the field of invisibility really only extends 9 meters while the bubble shows 10 meters. This is not a big issue, but definitely something to keep in mind. The Sunderer's cloak and bubble can be dropped for several reasons. If the Sunderer takes damage, the cloak and bubble will drop for 4 seconds. However, since small arms do not damage armored vehicles, normal bullets will not drop the shield, the only exception to this being the archer. Also, if any of the Sunderer's weapons are fired, the cloak and bubble will drop for 4 seconds, starting from the time that the last round was fired. A EMP grenade can also drop the stealth cloaking module. After some testing, the EMP grenade seems to be able to drop the cloaking device when detonated within 11 meters of the Sunderer. This drops the cloaking device for 8 seconds, and any units will become invisible again after 9 seconds assuming they are within the bubble. Infantry can also become uncloaked even while they are within the bubble. Infantry units will uncloak for 4 seconds if they take any form of damage, fire their weapons, or place deployables. This means you'll have to uncloak while healing, repairing, placing turrets, laying ammo, placing recon darts, etc. However, there are a few exceptions to this. A cloaked medic using their nano regen fields will not uncloak, the regen field will not kill them or their allies. A heavy assault can use any of their shields and remain cloaked. However, their shields will not be cloaked and will show up illuminating the outline of their body. The same thing goes for banning Maxis using Zealot Overdrive. Light Assaults can fly around inside the bubble without uncloaking. And lastly, we have Infiltrators, who are somewhat in between. When an Infiltrator cloaks or uncloaks while inside the bubble, they appear briefly and then go through the normal cloaking animation. Another interesting thing to note is that deployables will not become invisible while inside the bubble. This means that everyone will be able to see turrets, shield regen devices, 
recon darts, C4, etc. I did not find this to be a big deal. Most deployables are used far away from Sunderers, and if they were to be cloaked, it might start tipping this certification into being overpowered. When it comes to visibility, the cloaked Sunderer is extremely hard to see from any distance. We're going to play a quick game now called Spot the Sunday. I'm going to show you a couple of clips, and then show you where the Sunderer was located in each clip. I'm not going to keep each picture up for long, so if you want to try and spot it, then you need to pause the video. I hope that now you can understand how hard they are to see while cloaked. In the background, you can see the Sunderer from different distances away. And unless you're really close, they become almost impossible to see. The biggest giveaway is the amount of players around them, and the fact that they keep appearing and disappearing. However, even this can be hard to see at times, especially if the Sunderer is parked around a rock outcropping. Now I want to go over some of the interesting mechanics that I found while testing. First off, if an enemy enters a cloaked field, they will glow, and the color they glow will depend on their faction. Even if an enemy is cloaked, they will have that glow about them. This makes it next to impossible for infiltrators, or any other type of infantry, to hang around the Sunderer without being noticed. It is also worth saying that the cloaked Sunday is highly reflective of cloaks. It disperses light in really interesting ways, it makes it almost reflective when you get close. You will be able to see your iron sights, recon darts, and other light colors reflected off the Sunderer when you are close to it. An interesting mechanic is how the cloaking works with infantry shooting and actions. As we said earlier, shooting or actions done inside the bubble will uncloak you for 4 seconds. Even if you leave and re-enter, you still have to wait for the full 4 seconds. However, if you leave the bubble, shoot, or do any other type of action, you will immediately recloak when you enter the bubble, bypassing the usual 4 second wait. So if you need to shoot but want to minimize the amount of time you spend uncloaked, you should leave the bubble, shoot, and re-enter, and you will spend up to 75% less time uncloaked, assuming you only had to shoot for one moment. Another interesting thing to note is that if the NC Max uses his ABS shield, while cloaked, he will not uncloak, and his shield will remain invisible, unlike the VS Max. Same goes for the TR. If the Max locks down, they will not become uncloaked, but they will uncloak when they start shooting. Also, a dark flashlight will reveal the Sunderer. I don't find this particularly effective, because if you're close enough to use a dark flashlight, then you should be able to see the Sunderer. But, if you're running low graphics, or just have trouble seeing it, then the dark light flashlight is there for you. Another quirk is whenever you repair a cloaked Sunday, not only will you become visible, but the cloaked Sunday will become visible for a second before recloaking. Make sure you keep this in mind when deciding whether to repair. Also, when the Sunderer is cloaked, it will not smoke. If it was smoking before, as soon as the cloak comes up, it will stop smoking. This is a great feature and a smart move on the part of the developers. Another interesting quirk is that you cannot heal cloaked friendlies. This means if a friendly on low health enters a bubble and becomes invisible, they cannot be healed unless they leave the bubble or uncloak by shooting. But when repairing max units that are cloaked, the engineer will uncloak like normal, but the max will stay cloaked. The max will not even flash for a second like the Sunderer would. Make sure to keep these two facts in mind while working around cloaked Sundays. Also, while cloaked, the Sunderer can have things stuck to it, i.e. C4, Recon Darts, etc. But, these will not become invisible. Rather, they will just stick to the Sunday and look like they're floating. This is pretty standard, but I figured I would mention this in case someone had a question. Lastly, at night, sometimes, the bubble will have a slight white tint to it which could help in finding a cloaked Sunday. 
However, this is only visible from closer distances and will not help for spotting Sunderers at range. I want to spend a minute going over how to spot these. Adverse to what most people thought, they were actually pretty hard to find. As we saw earlier, they can be all but invisible from a distance. The first thing to remember is that people are still placing them in the same areas. Now these are a new addition to the game, so as time moves on, people may become more creative. But right now, they're still placing them in the normal popular places that everyone knows about. The best way to find them is to follow the stream of enemies back to their source. The main map is great for this, as you can see where a large amount of enemies are coming from. When you think you are around the location, look for enemies cloaking and decloaking. You can usually see this from a decent distance and will help you pinpoint the location of the sun beam. Your next best option is to look for the shimmering of the cloak bubble. For some reason, the cloak seems to be easiest to spot higher up or makes the top of the circle. Look for a slight waviness and the distortion of the terrain behind it. EMP grenades in the archer can be great for uncloaking a Sunderer, but do little to help you find it. Since the stealth cloaking device takes up the defensive slot, you only have the utility in the performance slots. The performance slot does not affect the cloaking device whatsoever, so you can choose what you like. But the utility slot will affect your cloaking device, so I'll quickly go over each of the three options. That is, the gate shield diffuser, smoke screen, and fire suppression, in regards to the cloaking device. While the sender is in motion, each of these utilities act exactly the same as they did before. But while cloaked, they act a little differently. If the gate shield diffuser is used while the sunderer is cloaked, the sunderer will glow the normal gate shield diffuser effect, but it will remain cloaked and the bubble will remain active. This paints a big glowing target and lets everyone know where your sundi is. The smoke scream seems to work also, although it has no particle effect while the sunderer is cloaked. And lastly, fire suppression. If the sunderer is cloaked and fire suppression is activated, the sundi will start to heal right away. Then, the standard repair animation rolls across and reveals the Sunday for 3.5 seconds before becoming invisible again. A few things to note here are that the bubble stays active while fire suppression reveals the Sunday, keeping everyone cloaked. Also, even though the Sunday is revealed, it is seen as if looking through a cloak at a solid object, making the Sunday blurry and harder to identify. After going over all the stats and quirks the certification line brings, you have to take a look and see how it fares in-game. Basically, is it over or under power? And in my opinion, it is neither. I think it walks the line pretty well and has its own place in the game. It's definitely not the best in some situations, and at other times it can be a terrific tool. I also agree with the price of the certification line. I don't want to see a ton of these around, they should be relatively hard to get. There are some little things I would like to see change, but as a whole, I feel it fits smoothly into the game at its present state. If I had a choice, I would not have added them to the game, but since they are here, I think they perform well for their intended role. Now I want to move on to a little bit of strategy while using the Sunderer with the Stealth Poking module. First off, make sure people are not using their weapons unless the Sunderer is being actively attacked. Most people are starting to get the hang of it, but if you're having trouble, you can always lock your vehicle by hanging the page down and then selecting the lock option. Currently, the PS4 version does not have this option, but they will, hopefully, get it sometime in the future. Another thing that will decrease detection is to either stay inside the bubble or to move out and into the base. If people keep popping in and out, it makes the location easier to detect. Get creative. This opens a whole new range of possibilities, and you no longer have to park your Sunday behind that one rock. The biggest advantage this certification line brings is for people to spawn at new locations that were not available before due to the fact that they were too vulnerable. As with anything, this certification is not without its downsides. Overall, you have less survivability when it comes to taking damage. Not only do you sacrifice your defensive slot, but you don't use your weapons as often due to wanting to stay cloaked. Also, when not cloaked, 
is no better than a stock Sunday because of the lack of that defensive slot. And while cloaked, it gives up all access to his guns for fear of being spotted. Overall, there's not a lot to it. It sacrifices some potential armor and survivability for the ability to cloak. So this was a long video, and I thank those of you who stuck through it. At the end of the day, there's one question that has to be asked. Is it worth it? Looking back, we discussed its abilities, strength, weaknesses, and just weird things it does. And for its 2330 cert price tag, I believe it's worth it. If you are already a good player and you have put your certs into the important things first, then this becomes a really nice addition to your arsenal. It can change the course of the battle and will forever change how we play Planet Side 2. Leave a comment down below let me know your thoughts about the stealth cloaking module and whether you think it's over or underpowered. If you like this video, feel free to give it a like and tell your friends about it. And if you want to see more content like this, then hit that subscribe button. This is Soapbox, signing off.